The Tribune, 29th of March 2024, a U.S.-India accord regarding Arunachal enrages the angriest China. Despite the implementation of 29 rounds of diplomatic meetings and 21 rounds of military-to-military -military discussions between India and China, the Dragon's Pincer assault on India has reached its peak, extending from Sela, or Sela, in Arunachal Pradesh to Kalam Island off the coast of Odisha. It is time to engage in forthright dialogue and pose uninhibited inquiries. What is the problem with Beijing? Is the leadership of the Communist Party of China CPC, experiencing mental exhaustion or an irreversible breakdown? Alternatively, what rationale could a foreign power have to object to Prime Minister Narendra Modi's recent inauguration of the Sela Tunnel with such naive arrogance? Does anyone have any uncertainty regarding the fact that Arunachal Pradesh is an inseparable and integral component of sovereign India? Therefore, the United States' explicit declaration that it recognizes Arunachal Pradesh's Indian territory and vehemently opposes any unilateral attempt to advance territorial claims across the line of actual control LAC, through incursions or encroachments, whether military or civilian, is not objectionable. On the other hand, China can sow disarray, confusion, and conflict in areas where none exists, this does not undermine the ordinary course of non-Chinese diplomatic discourse. The Chinese argument is absurd, China vehemently condemns and firmly opposes, the United States position, delineating that China-India boundary has never occurred. Unquestionably, Zhangnan, the ideal Chinese name for Arunachal, has consistently been under Chinese sovereignty. This is a truly remarkable hallucination. Is China capable of deciphering its own undeniable lie or falsehood? How has the allegedly Chinese territory of Zhangnan always been if the China-India border has never been delimited? It is imperative to inform the Chinese, who boast of possessing comprehensive knowledge despite their profound ignorance on the ground, that Sela, located at an elevation exceeding 13,500 feet, is precisely 20 miles southeast of Dewang and south of the McMahon Line. Furthermore, it is indisputable that Sela is situated within Indian territory. Hence, the Prime Minister's opening the tunnel represents not only his constitutional duty and responsibility as the head of state, but also his legal and sovereign prerogative. Returning to the unacceptability of U.S. positions on the bilateral between India and China, let us examine the counter-argument provided by Beijing. The region of Jammu Kashmir Ladakh has been a subject of bilateral concern between India and Pakistan ever since the Pakistani forces and tribal militias invaded the Kashmir Valley in October 1947, before the People's Republic of China even existed. Is China unaware of this? Then, what prompted China's intervention and flagrant transgression of Indian territorial sovereignty? The United States has solely issued a statement of fact regarding the legal status of Arunachal as a part of India. However, China had persistently encouraged the Pakistan Army and the IC to occupy Indian territory in Gilgit-Baltistan via a proxy conflict involving terrorists. When will China cease its occupation of Indian territory to preach to others? The Chinese antics have extended from the frigid heights of Sela to the coastline, where the actions of the CPC are anything but amicable. It is an ongoing provocation. The dragon has infiltrated the feeble and vulnerable island nations surrounding India, and at least one of them, the Maldives, is being meticulously manipulated to wage a potential proxy war, consistent with Beijing's land war against India funded by Pakistani terrorism. India plans to conduct another intercontinental ballistic missile test launch from its eastern coast in April. In anticipation of this, airmen have been issued a notum, notice to airmen, advising them to circumvent the 1,600-kilometer stretch spanning the Bay of Bengal. But none of it will be given to China. The CPC is resolute in its efforts to undermine India's sovereign rights across all domains and methods, as it perceives New Delhi as the most significant obstacle to its brand of communist imperialism. Therefore, the CPC dispatched four surveillance ships to obtain precise intelligence on India's missile launch from its territory and seas. Already, Chinese intelligence vessels have extensively used the Maldives port to track Indian Navy vessels in its territorial waters. The leadership of the CPC finds any momentous Indian action intolerable and abhorrent. In December 2022, India encountered this recurring pattern of Chinese interference when it was compelled to suspend long-range missile tests due to intelligence collecting activities conducted by a Chinese spy vessel along the Indian coastline. China's aggressive behavior has progressed to a critical level despite the repeated failures and missteps of Indian governments in their endeavors to foster a friendly relationship with China. The CPC has perpetually resisted New Delhi's adaptability with abhorrent intransigence. The tradition continues. Promptly, 
the recently concluded productive visit of the Indian Prime Minister to Bhutan will likely garner attention due to Beijing's persistent and intense endeavors to establish an embassy in Timpu. In 1939, Mao Zedong labeled Bhutan as a lost territory that belonged to his empire of the emperor. In 1904, his Amban, representative, in Lhasa stated, Bhutanese are subjects of the Heavenly Lord Emperor of China, and Bhutan serves as the Southern Gateway. Undoubtedly, the CPC's inclination towards fabrication is so profoundly ingrained in its members' minds that even the Times correspondent Neville Maxwell spoke openly about the Chinese tactic of turning truth on its head in his vehemently anti-India and pro-China book India's China War, referring to the 1962 war. That single line extracted from the Half-Truth manuscript exemplified the absolute truth's strength and exposed the CPC's duplicity, deception, and lying.